Welcome back. Today, we're going to find out if and when students learning online can return to school in person. But is the province prepared for a safe reopening? The key word there is safe. Welcoming back U of T epidemiologist Dr. Colin Furness. We're talking about schools, variants, vaccines, and a whole lot more. Good morning to you, Colin. Good morning. So let's start with the school system. A lot of parents, educators, kids are waiting. What is going to be announced today? Uh, you are pretty good at looking into that crystal ball. So from uh, your perspective, what do you think is going to happen or what should happen? Or maybe what I hope is going to happen. Yeah. I think it's important to get schools open, and obviously it needs to be done safely. We don't really understand COVID transmission in schools. Experts can't really agree. It looks sometimes like it's a fairly safe thing to do, and there's a lot of reasons to think that actually our measurement is bad. I think that many school boards are going to open. I think maybe Toronto and Peel will be held back simply because there's so much community level COVID, and that and that we'll, we'll maybe take a pause there and see if we can get numbers down a bit further first. I think that might be appropriate. That said, there's a lot of other minor hotspots in the province, and I, I would not be surprised, or maybe I'm hoping, that we hold back where we think we need to, to be careful. Okay, so there was some funding announced uh, for schools on Monday, saying they're going to start some asymptomatic testing. It's not sort of this blanket testing and broad testing, at least. Um, they're going to do various things, but is that enough? Do you feel safe that way? Should students and parents and educators feel safe? Uh, no, actually, I don't think we can say we're safe until we do universal testing. We should have done this last fall. When we opened schools in September, we had an opportunity to test in September and October and November. And if we had done that, we would understand what the transmission characteristics look like. We'd understand that maybe some classrooms that where windows can't open or where ventilation isn't as good shouldn't be used. There may be some schools where there's never any transmission. We don't know. And if we and if we test, if we test sporadically here and there, we're going to learn very little. We need to do universal testing to make sure everyone's safe. Some of the big news we're following uh, at the federal level is this facility in Montreal, and there's a lot of criticism around it. Why only now? It's going to take some time. Uh, what's your take on that and whether or not this is really just setting up the future versus what we need now? I'm not sure about the facility in, in Montreal. Um, I don't actually have information about that. So I'm sorry, I can't, can't really help you on that one. Okay, no worries. Let's talk about the vaccines, though, and, and where we sit. Obviously, we are behind schedule. We heard from retired General Rick Hillier saying, listen, we're not going to meet those targets, at least with the long-term care homes uh, and some of the residents that we would like to. Um, does this set us up for a major, major uh, delay for the average citizen to get this vaccine? Part of it depends on whether we're using Pfizer or other vaccines. The Pfizer vaccine is a challenge because of the deep, cold storage requirements. If we were able to move that around, and, and I would argue we should have been able to, we could have, should have vaccinated all long-term care residents. But moving that vaccine around, I guess we can't get a freezer on a truck. Uh, that's been a big problem. So then, then, of course, the supply of vaccine diminished because of production issues, not anyone's fault on, on this side of the ocean. Uh, and that's really unfortunate. That's very unfortunate that we decided decided to push LTC back because uh, we didn't want to get a freezer on a truck. And now we're, we're, we're really slow getting that done. It's, it's concerning because that's the vulnerable group we need to worry about the most. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, Dr. Furness, what we're going to do is uh, you say, hey, you're going to stick around for us. I know it's early, so we appreciate you being able to stick around. He's going to take all of your questions. So if you've got something for epidemiologist Dr. Colin Furness, please do let us know. 1-866-267-3797. Feedback at breakfasttelevision.ca. That's where you can reach us. And we're going to do that coming up in about 20 minutes. Thank you for that, Dr. Furness. And coming up next, we've got a new study focused on the AstraZeneca vaccine, finding some promising news about how the shot slows the spread of the virus. So we're going to tell you what that research found. That's next.